In this episode, we're going to take a look at smart contracts, which is based on blockchain. And I'm going to explain smart contracts to you using three stories. In the last episode, we took a look at blockchain and learned that it's really a digital record keeping system. And in it, the record of transactions are immutable, distributed, duplicated and decentralized. In this episode, we're going to take a look at smart contracts, which is based on blockchain. And I'm going to explain smart contracts to you using three stories. Story number one. This is Professor Alan Goldstein, one of my favorite professors at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. Professor Goldstein is a decorated practitioner, an awesome lecturer, and one of the most fantastic storytellers I've ever seen. One of the stories that he told us in class, I would never forget till this day. And the story was about how he went behind prison walls to interview an inmate. As a forensic psychologist, it's pretty common to go behind prison walls into a room to interview an inmate. Perhaps they're up for parole or they're going through an appeal process. So in this particular case, Dr. Goldstein started an interview like he would any other interview. He would go through the rules and he would say that everything we talked about in this room will be written down. The inmate agreed, consented, and they started talking. Halfway through the interview, the inmate said something to the effect of, you know what, if I'm, if I'm released today, I don't think I'll do any better. And Professor Goldstein wrote, furiously wrote down and scribbled whatever he just said. And the inmate realized what he has done wrong, quickly uh, told Professor Goldstein, no, 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 let's scratch the last part. It makes me look bad. But Professor Goldstein continued to scribble a new line. And the inmate go, oh, time out. What's going on here? I, I, I told you to scratch that. And Professor Goldstein finished writing his sentence and looked up at the prisoner and said, I told you, everything we talked about in this room will be written down. Your last line was, nah, let's scratch that. It makes me look bad. So that got us all laughing. But today, when I think about this story, it's a fantastic analogy of smart contracts and blockchain. Smart contracts is this unstoppable engine that keeps going, and it leaves behind a trail of data that you cannot edit or go back to mutate or change, just like the notes of Professor Alan Goldstein. Story number two. Ready Player One is a 2008 film, sci-fi film, by, directed by Steven Spielberg. A, a really, really cool movie if you have not watched it. And um, spoiler alert. Uh, so in the movie, a game maker created this virtual world where people can earn coins and more importantly, solve this uh, a series of puzzles to, to get keys that needs to be used to find a golden egg or something. Um, not entirely accurate, I'm sure. Um, now, the game maker died and left behind this program that would self-execute and any player can go in and keep trying. If they fail, they can keep trying. Uh, and finally, the main character of the movie unlocked the first uh, challenge. He, he found the key. And you would think that in a normal game that since we have a winner, everything is over. However, the way the program was written, anybody who followed the same logic and sequence and steps to solve the quest will also get that key, to, to be presented with that key that they will need to get to the end of the game. So uh, the main character finds it, and then subsequently other players went through the same steps to get that first key to unlock uh, for the golden egg. And that to me, was a perfect example of how a smart contract works. It's self-executing, and it could be duplicated many times. The same rules will apply each time, the same logic, 
and every time you start from the beginning, it will execute itself and carry through what it was programmed to do. So that was a fantastic analogy of the self-executing nature of smart contracts. Story number three. This is Honus Wagner. Honus Wagner was a baseball player, uh, played in uh, Pittsburgh in the late 1800s to the early uh, 1900s. What's interesting about uh, uh, Honus Wagner today is that uh, it's something called the baseball card. The baseball card is something that you would buy and trade. Uh, they use obviously used to uh, give it away in, in cigarette uh, packs, I believe. In, in, in the earlier years. But now these are so valuable that this particular card sold for $6.6 .6 million. Uh, and there were people debating about whether the value of this card is really $6.6 .6 million. Because if you Google for yourself, you'll find a big well-known case of, of how this card was sold and, and how it fetched such a high price. And it pointed to something uh, criminal uh, called shill bidding. Now, shill bidding is a uh, incredibly devious process. So you are familiar with eBay. Find an item that we want, we put in a price in the in an auction process as a bid, and if someone else wants to pay more, they they will win. In the shill bidding, the seller will create fake identities and fake bidders to put in a price just to beat you. So when you put 20, they will put 21. When you put 22, another person supposedly put in 24 and 25 and so on and so forth. And the end result is you end up paying more than you're supposed to. Um, so that is a very interesting um, concept. Uh, and in fact, it's studied by, by security experts in the world of smart contracts and blockchain called a Sybil attack. <laughs> Not cyber attack, Sybil attack. Uh, Sybil refers to a pseudonym of a patient who had uh, 17, I believe, split personality disorders. So the word they borrowed that word Sybil, and to today a Sybil attack is when uh, bad actors in a network are pretending to uh, create consensus about a particular data point, uh, and. And today, there are mechanisms and security measures taken to make sure that the that doesn't happen. So to understand smart contracts, let's take a look at a traditional paper contract. Uh, and we are going to use a vehicle bill of sale. Um, a vehicle bill of sale will have some components common uh, in it across different templates. First, it will talk about who's involved in the contract. And obviously, it will be the buyer and the seller. And it will also have a statement about what this contract is all about. Well, this is about selling a car for X amount of dollars. At a certain point in the contract, there will be data that's important. Data such as the date, data such as the car that make the model, the mileage. And there will also be a point where it talks about what is agreed in this contract. And at the end, there are signatories, people who whose signature is meaningful in making this contract real. So I like to look at the world of smart contracts in its core components. There's always a component of people or parties, people who need to authorize it, people who are involved in the contract. And then there's data, data that is about the the data and time, it could be how something is measured, the quantity of something. And there's always an asset, something that is of value, that's important enough for us to, to track in a blockchain. And there's obviously a logic, the rules that are applied, the conditions, what will happen when particular conditions are met. If we bring this back to our example of the bill of sale of a vehicle, we see that the asset here is the car. And the people involved are is the buyer and the seller. The data would be things like the date of sale, the amount, the price of the car, and the odometer reading, which is the, the mileage. And there's always 
logic. What are, what are the steps, what are the sequence of things that will happen, and what happens when particular conditions are met or not met. Another example that really helped me understand smart contracts is the world of hired musicians. So if you are a venue owner, you have a, a bar that has live music, you can hire musicians to come play for you. Now, how you compensate these musicians can get very simple or very complicated. Uh, if we were to apply this to back to our model, the asset is the money, the revenue that is being generated from, from ticket sales, from merch sales, and, and so on and so forth. The people would be the venue owner and the musicians. The data would be things like whether, uh, how long is the set, how long is the performance, uh, and, and what's the duration of the performance, how much break they get, information that are, are important to both parties. The logic here is where the rep will be more mathematical. It will be how the revenue is divided, depending on what where they come from. So if it's a merch sale, for example, uh, and it's $5,000, then perhaps uh, $4,000 will go to the performer and uh, $1,000 will go to the, rev the venue owner. So we covered a lot of grounds. So we start talking about blockchain, a little bit about crypto and Satoshi Nakamoto. Um, and in this episode, we dived into smart contracts. And we even had time for a funny prison story. Um, so I'm sure you're eager to get started. And that's exactly what we'll do in the next few episodes. And we'll start by making sure that you are ready and set up on your system to do development. So join me in the next episode.